What is ejection fraction? Your doctor told you that you have a low or reduced ejection fraction, then used a whole bunch of medical terminology. Now you have more questions than you even started with. Let's talk about it. Hello, welcome to Cardium. I'm Jason Moran and today we're talking about ejection fraction. So most likely you've recently had an echocardiogram, which is a big fancy word for an ultrasound of the heart. A technician probably used a portable machine to read the blood flow into and out of your heart to measure your heart's efficiency. It's the amount of blood that is squeezed out of the last chamber that your doctor's referring to when they describe ejection fraction. To better illustrate this, let's start with a quick anatomy refresher of the heart. So let's start by first looking at the heart. Now, the heart does not look like the cutesy Valentine's heart that we're all familiar with. It's made up of four chambers. To help illustrate this point, we're gonna start by looking at the top two chambers, which are called the atria, and then the bottom two chambers called the ventricles. As the heart beats, we hear that lub-dub sound. It's these chambers squeezing, lub-dub, lub-dub. Now all the blood from the toes to the brain return to the heart through the top right atrium, where it is then squeezed into the bottom right ventricle, lub-dub. From here, blood is squeezed again out of the heart into the blood vessels that surround the lungs, lub-dub, where it receives oxygen. Next, the blood returns back to the heart to the top left atria, lub-dub, where it is squeezed again into the bottom left ventricle. Now this chamber here, the left ventricle, is responsible for getting all the blood back to the toes and brain. So this chamber has a much bigger job than any of the other chambers and is actually quite a bit larger than the other chambers too. When this chamber squeezes, blood is ejected out of the heart and out to the rest of the body. The amount of blood that is ejected is called the ejection fraction. This is what your doctor is talking about. This is important because we normally have an ejection fraction around 50 to 70%, meaning that in a healthy heart, there is always a residual of 30% or more of blood that remains in this chamber after it has been squeezed. If the heart becomes weakened, damaged, and made inefficient for some reason, then this ejection fraction can be reduced, making circulation to the body more difficult. Typically, ejection fraction is discussed in percentages and represents the amount of blood that is actually squeezed out or ejected from this left ventricle. For instance, in a normal healthy heart, we said the ejection fraction was 50 to 70 percent. People with ejection fractions from 41 to 49 percent are typically going to experience some shortness of breath during activity, like walking or going up and down stairs. This is often referred to as borderline heart failure. Now, for those of you with ejection fractions of less than 40%, you're commonly known as reduced and may be experiencing symptoms like shortness of breath, swelling in the legs, and fatigued even while sitting. All of these signs are indicators of possible heart failure and need to be taken very seriously. For more information on heart failure, check out our video called, What is Heart Failure? As ejection fraction decreases, more and more residual blood remains in the heart. This causes backup into the upper chambers and lungs and also causes poor circulation to the rest of the body as well since the heart is unable to maintain good, strong contractions forcing blood through the vessels. This poor circulation may become evident by the swelling in your feet and ankles. For more information on this, check out our video, Why Are My Legs Swelling? With proper care and treatment, ejection fraction can be improved for many people and allow you to live a long and healthier life. Now this may require the use of a water pill, uh, fluid restriction, or even a low sodium diet. Follow your physician's directions on this and be sure to be consistent. This is not an area where you can allow inconsistencies or skip out on taking your medications. Well that's it for this video here at Cardium. If you found this helpful, be sure to like us and leave me a comment below. Also, please hit that subscribe button below for more great information. If you have questions or want to see anything in the future videos, let me know and I'll be happy to address it. Until next time, y'all take care of each other.